Hello and welcome. Today I wanted to shoot a review that some of you have been asking me for for a while, and that's a review of the KyberLite V5. Now, if you're not familiar with KyberLite, I've been reviewing their products for a while. They started out as a Kickstarter, uh, and they've been sort of filling the niche of uh, not the most budget of budget sabers, but probably the most budget, fully customizable saber. So uh, I wanted to talk about the V5 and tell you about what's changed. It's quite a lot. Uh, and compare it to the previous versions of the Kyber Light Saber. So I wanted to start off with the, uh, the, uh, the design of the hilt itself and what's included. So to show you what's changed, let me show you an older version Kyber Light. Now this was a V1 body with a V3 board in it. I'll get to the board in just a second, but let's talk about the body. Uh, one of the things that uh, came on it was these sort of machined in grooves right here. Now these grooves never really served a purpose, and when you put a uh, sleeve on it, it covers up the grooves, so you never actually see them. I always kind of wondered about them. The grooves are also a little bit rough uh, on the V1 bodies, especially. They sort of fixed that in sort of in later versions, but we always had sort of the hard edges around the buttons and this machining here. So one of the things that they've changed in the V5 is they've removed those grooves, which makes sense to me because I was never really sure why they were there in the first place. They've removed the grooves, so we've got a solid finish on this. Now, it's available in black and silver. Uh, I think they had a gold. Maybe the gold is in the V5, but there was a gold body once upon a time. But they removed the grooves, so now it's flat and solid. Now, using it just like this, um, this doesn't look very good. But one of, the or one of the advantages of the KyberLite is that all of their parts work on their sabers. So other than removing the grooves, the V5 is the same size as the V4 and 3 and 2 and 1 sabers were, which means that all of the accessories that they've had... i to tighten my set screw here before I can get that on. All the accessories that they've had over the years still work on the new boards. The buttons still line up. So this is actually my favorite accessory bundle or bundle they've made right here, which is the Fallen Order bundle. All right, so all of these parts still work on the new sabers as well. Now, one of the other things that's changed is the included pommel. So originally, the Kyber Lights came with this as their default pommel, and you could use any pommel that they make. They've switched out this big sort of bulky pommel for a low-profile pommel. Now, this low-profile pommel is the same one that they sold with that Fallen Order bundle set. So uh, this actually works a little bit better because the design of the hilt itself has sort of a pommel built in. So you put this thing on, and it's not nearly as bulky. Uh, if you do want to use any of the bulkier pommels, you can take the pommel out of one and stick it in another, and it works just fine. All right, so they've taken some of the extraneous bits off of the, uh, off of the hilt design itself. Uh, they've included a more low-profile pommel. So let me talk about the blade real quick as well. Now, one of the places where Kyber Light really hasn't stepped up their game is their blade. Now, I've been kind of a fan of the Kyber Light blades as uh, just regular blades since they have a lifetime warranty on them. And I know that Kyber Light is one of the few places where if you do break their blades in dueling, they will replace them for you, which is kind of cool. But the blade technology really hasn't stepped up over time. Their blades still do not include a diffusion film. Now, um, they're using a trans white blade, so some people say that you don't really need a diffusion film. But the problem with it is that... Uh, for one, it doesn't diffuse quite as well if it has film in it, and also it kind of has a hollow and plasticky sound without that film there. So for instance, this one right here has film in it, this one doesn't. There's always sort of this uh, vibration in this that makes it feel to me like uh, cheap plastic, whereas you put a little bit of film in it and it absorbs the shock a little bit more and it just kind of feels and sounds different. So I prefer it much with, or I much prefer it with film. Also, the tips on these, they don't glue them in. So the uh, tip is a nice, deep socketed, threaded tip with a shine through mirror on it. But since they don't glue them in, um, these things do loosen over time and start to rattle around. 
So the blades, uh, the issues with the blade are easy enough to fix. You can put a spot of glue on the tip, thread it in, and it'll never come out again. You can put diffusion film in it. Why they don't do these things when they send them out, I'm not real sure, but the blade is much the same as the blade has always been. So that's one area where they haven't really stepped up in the V5 yet. Uh, when you get the thing, you get it, this was a double box, but you get it with this giant box here. And inside, <clears throat> we have the base components, which for a black saber, is a black sleeve and a black angled emitter. So relatively no frills, pretty straightforward components. But again, any of their parts work on any of their sabers. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the features so that we can talk about what's changed there. Uh, that's where most of the change has happened. So the V5s, or the V4s rather, I didn't review the V4 board because the V4 board was exactly the same as the V3 board, except with a louder speaker. So uh, that wasn't a big enough upgrade for me to consider redoing an entire review on it. The V5 is a substantial move in the right direction, so I'll talk about that. But the, uh, the, v the board I've got right here is a V3. Features on it are the same as the V4, it's just not quite as loud. So what the Kyber lights used to be, uh, if I power this on, okay, I had kind of a um, rather annoying, that was the original sound font that came with the Kyberlite V1s. Uh, with the V3s, they added a second sound font, or a second sound font that we can get to by turning it on and holding down the color switch. There we go. So this was a slightly better one. And then it had a mute. There we go. Mute feature. All right, now all of these features on this were triggered with the aux button right here, which is also what you use to change the color of the blade. So turning the sound font from one to another is going to change the blade color. Setting it into mute is going to change the blade color. Powering it off, even when it's in mute, it forgets that it's in mute and it, r it runs the power off sign, or uh, sound rather. So with this one, that was power on, power off. Uh, this was color shift. This one, um, it didn't really have a blaster deflect. It would clash. But the clash on this has always been kind of annoying to me. Let me uh, load up the clash effect. So here we have a red. So I've talked about this in the other reviews, but you notice that when that clash happens, it goes from the blade color to white to off to white and then back to the blade color. So there's always this dead spot in the middle. All right, so let's look at the features of the V5. So the first notable feature that you're going to see on this is that this thing is built with smooth swing. Whereas the old boards had that sort of repetitive font that was the classic swing that would wait until you moved it and then it would go vroom, and it always sort of had a delay. Smooth swing moves the sound with the movement of the saber. So it uh, picks up speed, it uh, pulls off speed. I'll show you that. Okay, this is their dark saber font. Uh, more on that in just a second. But as I spin it around, I'll switch to another sound font, and I do that just by tapping the aux button. This is their light side font. And these now feature um, blaster deflect, so if I tap the power on button, I get blaster deflex. If I hold down the aux, I get lockup. And you notice that that 
white to dead to white to black to cut or to back to blade color is gone now. With the blaster deflects and the clashes, it just flashes white like a flash on clash always really should have been. All right, let me show you the third sound font. This is the Sith sound font. All right, so they fixed the uh, flash on clash problem. They've added in smooth swing, which is really nice. And these fonts are a lot better than their old fonts. The old ones were kind of annoying, so I ended up using it on mute most of the time. The new fonts are by uh, Ksith, I think. I'm pretty sure I'll check that, and if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll correct it on the bottom of the screen here. But the new fonts are actually by somebody who makes Saber fonts for a living um, and has been doing so for years. So they're made by somebody who knows what they're doing as opposed to just sort of canned uh, sound fonts that you're used to on boards coming out, or uh, like budget eco boards coming out of China. So much better in the sound font game. The smooth swing is nice. Uh, we've got three fonts on here. One of the things about this is that Kyber Light is still not programmable in terms of the fonts or the blade effects. Um, the blade effect you noticed on the Jedi is solid. On the Sith, it's sort of unstable or flashy. On the, uh, on the Dark Saber, it's kind of flickery. You can't change that. It is what it is. While the board does save the colors associated with the fonts, so if I set Jedi to green, Sith to red, and Dark Saber to white, it's going to stay that way. Um, I'll talk about color shifting in just a second here, but uh, while I can set the colors to the sound fonts, I can't change the effect, the, uh, the crackle effect or the flicker effect or anything like that. That's built into the board, as are the three sound fonts, so I cannot add more fonts to this. It is what it is, and it comes with what it comes with. All right, let me talk about the color shifting, because on the old board, the color shifting was the aux button, and you would just hit that one time, and it would shift through the colors. So the, um, the new color shifting, what you, or what you do is you triple tap the power button and it's working on a throttle system. Now this is something that newer boards like Profi and the CFX board are doing this throttle system. First time I ever saw it was with a Spark 2 on a Saber Forge. But basically when I enter the color shift mode, it's going to make a little tone that's going to tell me that I'm there. And then as I rotate the Saber, it's going to shift between colors and then I'll hit the button to lock it in. So I'll show you that. I'm on the Sith font here, so triple tap. There's a little noise that goes in there. Let me see. If... There we go. Now I have this saber set to 25% sound, so if this sounds quiet to you, there's a reason that it's quiet. I've got it set quiet because the loud font, which I'll show you a little bit later, would blast the heck out of this room. This is louder than I am comfortable with. So I have it set to 25% volume to show it off here. But anyhow, I entered the color shift mode, and so I rotate it, and I can cycle through the colors. When I get it where I want it, I hit the button, it makes a little chime, and I've locked it in. All right, so there's the color shift mode, and that's actually a really nice color shift mode that wasn't there, or that uh, they didn't used to have. I, I like that a lot better than the button, because like with the button, when you wanted to mute or change sound fonts, you would always shift the color. So uh, this gives you the ability to shift the color through a specific set of routines that, where you're only shifting the color. Now, other things on this, uh, this has a battle button lock, which is a feature that I actually kind of like. I talked about hitting the buttons accidentally while you're using the saber. With this one, you can set it so that it's locked, uh, which means that no matter what you do to the buttons while you're using it, it's not going to register the change. So if you're doing dueling or something like that, the button lock is kind of a neat feature. And that's a uh, quintuple tap, I believe, of the aux button. And it'll make a little to turn it on and to turn it off. So it's rather difficult to put it into lock. You're not going to put it into lock accidentally. And while it's in lock, you're not going to do anything accidental. All right, now while the Saber is off, a couple new features that this thing has on it this, or, uh, these days. Um, I showed you that you can switch the sound font by tapping the aux button. Uh, you can also adjust the volume, uh, set it into mute, and you can um, do a check on the battery, which is kind of interesting. So let me cover that real quick. To check the battery power, what you do is you hold down the aux switch for, I think it's like five seconds. Let's see. 
There we go. And the uh, Stephen Hawking's voice comes on and tells you that the saber is at 63%. All right, to uh, get it to the different sound, or the uh, different volume levels, let's see, that's, try to figure out, or try to remember how I did that. 100%. There we go. There's 100%, so I hold down the top button and hit the, uh, or hit the aux button. 75%. Oh. So one of the problems with the volume setting is you do run the risk of turning on the saber while you're adjusting the volume. One of the other difficulties of the volume setting is that the voice that tells you the volume is always at 100%. But uh, let me finish cycling through. 25%. Okay. It doesn't tell you that mute is there. Oh, I'm switching the sound font. 100%. There we go. So this is 100%. And in a smallish room, uh, that's a lot of sound. So that's why I had it on 25% to begin with. All right, so um, this Sabre... I think that they are actually, I think what, what KyberLite is doing with all these changes is they are, they are actually managing to stay competitive. They're not staying high-end competitive. The board on this is not as customizable, not as feature-packed as like a CFX board or a Profi board can be. But it's a whole lot better than a lot of the Eco boards. Some of the Eco boards are beginning to come out with Smooth Swing as well. This seems to be a better Smooth Swing than like the Eco Smooth Swing boards that you're going to get from like LGT Sabres. You also have the ability to customize this. Uh, a lot of places like LGT and some of the stuff that you get on AliEx or AliExpress um, have the ability to switch parts. This thing still uses their full line of parts, so if you've been collecting KyberLite models over time, uh, then the full line of parts will still fit onto this thing. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention about this. Uh, when this thing came out, I was thinking, well, I'll just get the V5 board and plug it into uh, my old Sabre, and I, then I can use all my parts problem with that is that the it'll work, but the V5s had a 10-watt LED in them, whereas the V everything else had a 5-watt LED. The 5-watt was pretty bright, or was pretty bright. The 10-watt is brighter. It's still in hilt, so it's not going to work with anything NeoPixel. But, uh, so if I were to plug the, board, or the new board into an old Sabre, I'd burn out the light pretty quickly. So what they have is they have a power save mode on this, which is what you'd have to use to... Um, get the old saber to uh to run the, or get the uh, older saber and the older led to run the newer board without damaging your saber there we go so that was the quintuple or quintuple tap or uh, tap here so now it's in five watt mode okay there's five watt mode there's 10 watt mode So as you can see, the 10 watt is brighter, but they're both significant, or they're both pretty dang bright. So this is a decently bright board to begin with, even in 5 watt mode. But you have to be careful of that compatibility thing. They did upgrade the LEDs as well. So V3 versus, or V3 slash 4 versus V5, they've improved it in every way. They improved the sound fonts, they improved the color switching, they improved the LED, they improved the volume, they improved the features, they improved the overall hilt design, they improved the parts that come with it. So I think, once again, this is a really good move. It's nice, that I, it's nice to see a Sabre company that tries to keep up as opposed to just sort of resting on their laurels and continuing to do what they've always done. Uh, I see that a lot with other Sabre companies, but KyberLite put in some money, put in some uh, research, and actually came out with something that... that basically keeps up. So hopefully this has been a good review for you that you that's given you a good idea of what the V5 is. Uh, if you are a KyberLite fan, especially if you've got a library of older KyberLite parts, uh, this is definitely probably an upgrade that you'd want to consider. All right. And uh, if you enjoyed this, join me back for more and I'll see you next time.